Hello all. Hope you are doing fine and well. Today we are going to discuss an extract from Colleen Carter lecture, The Lahore Attack by Kumar Sangakkar. So let's discuss the story. Right. So, an extract from Colleen Card lecture, The Lahore Attack by Kumar Sangakkar. The first part starts telling that I was fortunate that during my life, I never experienced violence in Sri Lanka firsthand. There have been so many bomb explosions over the years, but I was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. What can you tell about this? What can you uh, tell me about this? Yes. I was fortunate that during my life, I was never experienced violence in Sri Lanka firsthand. What do you mean by uh, experiencing violence in first hand? That means like he has, he didn't have his own personal experiences of violence. But you know, in the country, a lot of violent activities were happening during that time. You know, we had a 30 year old war, right? So there were bomb explosions in all the, all over the country. Okay. But Sankak saying that I was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. That means he was very fortunate that whenever an explosion happening, he was not there in the place where an explosion happening. You know, there mm -hmm. were several bomb explosions in the country, maybe at the port uh, station or central bank. There were other places, okay? Temple of Truth Relic. You can't imagine, okay? When there was a bomb, there were several bus bombs happening, especially the Capitol Lam incident. Right, so a lot of other terrorist activities were happening in the country. Right, so he said that he was lucky that he was never in the wrong place at the wrong time. In Colombo, apart from these occasional bombs, life was relatively normal. So apart from these bomb explosions, life was relatively normal, right? So we grew up with that thing, even we went to school during this time, right? People had the luxury of being physically detached from the war. Detach means not attaching, okay? Physically detached means, okay? So from the body, they were not attached to the wall. Physically, they were not attached to the wall, but mentally, they were involved. Mentally, we all were involved. That means each morning, once we switch on the TV or the radio, whatsoever, what we see or hear is how many terrorists have been killed or how many army officers have been killed, what sort of attacks have been happened. It was a time like that, okay? So children went to school, people went to work, I played my cricket. So the cricket was the only solace for people in Sri Lanka those days because it was so hectic. The life was like so uncertain. You don't know when there will be an explosion again, right? In other parts of the country though, people were putting their lives in harm's way every day either in the defense of their motherland or just trying to survive the geographical circumstances that made them inhabit a war zone. Now, for this, of course, the movies that you have watched might be helpful. Do you know there's, there are things, villages called border villages, or singular you call Mayan Gamman. Anybody who has heard? These villages like are quite important, right? Because they were like, they faced terrorism in both sides, as I could say, or the violence in both sides. On one party, the terrorists are attacking them. Then they are grabbing their children and taking them to the war front. On the other hand, when there's a war front, okay, so when our army is killing the terrorists, terrorists come and hide in these villages and sometimes even the civilians will have to sacrifice their lives. Okay, so they are risking their lives. Okay, and who are the other people who are putting their lives in harm? In the defense of the motherland? That is our brave soldiers. Okay, so they are putting their lives risk at due to the defense of the motherland and just trying to others who are trying to survive the geographical circumstances are the people who live in the border villages. Okay, clear with it? Any questions so far? 
Thanks. Right. Thank you. Okay. For them, avoiding bullets, shells, mines, and grenades were imperatives of survival. What do you mean by these things? Do you know these things? Bullets, shells, mines, grenades. Yes? Shells, you know, mines, the landmines, grenades, you know, hand grenades are there, are bomber, mines, these mean bomber. Likewise, okay, so what imperative for survival? Imperative means essential. Essential for survival. What is survival? What are the differences of these things? Living, existing, and surviving. Struggle for life. Yeah, very good. Struggle for life. So in that moment, what is important is life. Okay? Surviving, in, when you are in the mode of surviving, what is important is life. Okay? Saving the life. Okay? You don't have time to think whether you ate for the dinner or the morning. You have no time to think about that, whether you are wearing a cloth or not. You don't have to think. The only priority is saving your life. Okay, so these people are going through it. Even we can't relate because we don't have first-hand experience. We don't know how it feels like to live in a border village. Okay, we don't know how to live with terrorism like this. Although there were occasional bomb explosions here, right, during that time. Okay, so other than that, there were like no major incidents, right? And also, what when Sangakkar say that, I never experienced violence in Sri Lanka firsthand, which means, which show the strength of our military system. Because like, you know, the people here, especially in the Western province or other provinces, like basically we didn't face that thing because the army was defending us. Okay, so we didn't experience violence in Sri Lanka firsthand because of their talent. Okay, because they were putting their lives at risk to save our lives. Right. This was an experience that I could not relate to. I had great sympathy and compassion for them, but had no real experience with which I could draw parallels. Parallels means similarities. So he had no first-hand experience where he could draw similarities with his own experience, right? What these people are going through so far. Can you understand that? Now, Kumar Sangakkara is giving the setting for the story, telling that throughout his life, although there was a 30-year-old war in the country, he never experienced any sort of a first-hand bomb explosion or any sort of a personal experience here in Sri Lanka related to war and violence. Can you understand? Right. Let's go to the other part. That was until we toured Pakistan in 2009. We set off to play two tests in Karachi and Lahore. The first test played on a feather bed passed without great incident. So uh, until when he had no experience? Until when we toured Pakistan in 2009. Until, he was, uh, until it was 2009, he had no other experience. We set off to play Two tests in Karachi, you know, test matches in Karachi. Karachi is again a city in Lahore. Now, when you talk about Pakistan, you know, those days the terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups are functioning. Okay, and in Pakistan also the car bombs or terrorist attacks, those were regular things. Okay, so you don't know like when there will be an explosion. Now, this was the time where cricketers refused to play in Pakistan, right? So in that moment, Sri Lanka took the opportunity and in order to like help Pakistani cricket, they went there as a supporting to their cricket to play at their home. Can you understand? At the country is the other cricket teams refused to play in Pakistan, claiming that Pakistan is no longer safe for cricketers. But Sri Lankan team took the challenge and went there. Right. So... The first test played on feather bed. Feather bed means easily it was played, passed without great incidents. So there was no like great incident during the first test match. The second test was also meandering along with us piling up a big first innings when we departed for the ground on day three. Meandering along with us means? Yes, it's more like winding with us or rambling with us, troubling with us along with us. Without any aim. Yeah, without any aim, likewise, yes. Okay, piling up a big first innings. 
So what happened if the uh, if there's a big first inning? What happened if the team is uh, the Pakistan team is batting well, and if they have huge uh, first innings? What happened? Yes, when you departed for the ground on the day three, having been asked to leave instead of waiting for the Pakistan bus, we were anticipating, we were expecting a day of hard toil for bowlers. Hard toil means hard work or else a hard day for the bowlers, you know. If that team is batting, the bowlers will have to ball. You know, like test matches, it's happening the entire day. But it's quite difficult. Can you understand that? Right. At the back of the bus, the fast bowlers were loud in their complaints. So what happened? The bowlers were complaining because they have been bowling the whole day. The other day also they will have to ball, right? I remember Tilan Tushare being particularly vocal, vocal means particularly vocal means being talkative, complaining that his back was near breaking point. Now this is more like a direct translation from Singhala back was near breaking point, which means on the cadet, you know, likewise, right? He joked that he wished a bomb would go off so we could all leave Lahore and go back home. Now you can see here, right? What's happening? He said that if there's a bomb explosion happening, at least we could go home, right? So he was saying something like that, and you can see how his words came true. Now, 30 seconds had passed when we heard what sounded like firecrackers. Now, what happened? After he Tilan Dushara said that thing, what happened? They heard something like firecrackers going off. Suddenly a shout came from the front, get down, they're shooting at the bus. So what happened? Some terrorists, some group of terrorists are shooting at their bus. Clear? Right. So let's see what happened then. The reaction was immediate. Everyone died for cover and took shelter on the aisle or behind the seats. With very little space, we were all lying on top of each other. So what happened? The reaction was immediate. Now you can see, like, without telling who is shooting, why they are shooting, okay, are people are like that, no? Okay, putting their heads out of the windows to see who is shooting. Okay, you might have seen when people are traveling in buses, when they see an accident or whatsoever, they put their heads out of the windows to see what is happening there. Okay, that is what our people do normally. But here you can see they are like, they were very quick. They reacted immediately. And they knew what, what sort of precautions to be taken. Everyone dived for cover and took shelter on aisle behind the seats. You know, the gap between the seats, they were going under the seats or like covering their heads uh, from the seats likewise. With very little space, we were lying on the top of each other. So what happened? They were all lying on top of each other. That means a very little space is there, like uh, in the in between the seats. Then the bullet started to hit. It was like a rain on tin roof. This is also again sort of a direct translation from Singhala, right? Okay, tin roof. It can like takaramata vatura vatana, right? The bus was at a standstill, an easy target for gunmen. So it was like in the middle of the road. And it was an easy target for the gunmen. As the bullets started bursting through the bus, all uh, through the bus, all we could do was stay still and quiet, hoping and praying to avoid death or injury. So, when they were like being attacked, only thing they could do is okay, praying for their safety. Okay. Sadi Mahela, who sits at the back of the bus, shouts, saying he thinks he's been hit in the shin. Shin means uh, below his knee. Okay. I am lying next to Tilan. He groans in the pain as a bullet hits him in the back of his thigh. So what happened now, Tilan? Uh, what happened? He was also hit with a bullet in the back of the thigh. Okay. Now he was also shot. I turn my head to look at him. I feel something whiz pass. Whiz pass means quickly passing his ear. And a bullet thuds into the side of the seat, exact spot where my head had been few seconds earlier. So what happened? Yes. So his head was there. He just looked the other way just to check on Tilan. Then what happened? 
a bullet passed and thuds into the seat where his head was few seconds earlier. Okay, clear with that. Now they are like being attacked by the terrorists. I feel something hit my shoulder and it goes numb. Okay, numb being Sirivata now. I know I had been hit, but I was just relieved and praying I was not going to be hit in the head. So he was thankful because he was not shot in the head. Tarangu Paranavitana on his debut tour is also next to me. He stands up, bullets flying all around him, shouting, I have been hit. Now this fellow is standing up, right? When the bullets are hitting, you could not stand up, right? As he holds his blood-soaked chest, collapse into his seats, apparently unconscious. So what happened? Tarangu Paranavitana has been hit in the chest. Okay, so he collapsed onto the seat, apparently unconscious. I see him and think, oh my God, you were out first ball, run out in the next innings, and now you have been shot. What a terrible first tour. Now, this was the first tour of Taranga Paranavitana. And what, what sort of fateful incident was that? You were out first ball. Parani ball him out, right? It's run out in the next inning, second innings. Okay, so he was run out. And now you have been shot. Okay, now you have been shot in the chest. What a terrible first two. Now this part, of course, I think Sangha is adding to, uh, like with the intention of adding humor to the speech, right? At this moment, he might not be thinking something like that, right? So he was just adding a bit of humor to the speech. And if you could see like uh, the gathering was also smiling at this. It is strange how clear your thinking is. Now, this is what should happen. Now, if we face some incident like that, what happens is we panic. Then we are like making more, the crisis more worse. Now here the team, of course, they were acting in a very calm manner. I didn't see my life flash by. There was no insane panic. Insane panic means, insane means crazy panic. Okay, so like, you know, you are getting a panic or like troubled unnecessarily. There was absolute clarity and awareness of what was happening at that moment. There was, it was so clear what was happening at that moment because they faced it in a very brave manner. I hear the bus roar into life to start to move. If I could remember, recall, I think this, uh, the bus driver was brought to Sri Lanka and he was even awarded because of his talent. It says that he just, just like look from the, like turn his head just to see from the windscreen and drive even without looking from the windscreen. Okay, so time to time, like looking up and put the bus into the stadium because if he stood up, he was also would be shot by the gunman, right? Dilshan, you know uh, him, Tilakrasa Dilshan, is screaming at the driver, drive, drive, we speed up and swerved and finally inside the safety of the stadium. Now they were a bit close to the stadium and this ultimately went inside the stadium. So, they are so rushed to get off the bus. Taranga Paranavitana stands up. He's still bleeding as the bullet lodged lightly in his sternum. Sternum means the rib cage, so where your chest is, like your heart is. So it has not hit the heart. The body of the bus temper, uh, tempering its velocity enough to be stopped by the bone. So, you know, the bullet has like first hit the bus and then it has gone to the chest. So therefore, the speed of the bullet has been a bit of reduced. So therefore, he was not directly hit on the chest. Tilan is helped off the bus. You know, he was like also hitting his thigh. In the dressing room, there's a mixture of emotions, anger, relief, joy. Why it's anger? Anger because he was being, they were being a target for the terrorists. Okay, then relief, no one died. Joy, that means they were all together again. Players and the coaching staff are being examined by paramedics. Paramedics means these first aid doctors or these trainee doctors, you know, in the cricket matches, these people come with this uh, medicine bag and all treat uh, uh, cricket players. You might have seen in matches. Tilan and Paranavitana are taken by ambulance to the hospital. So they were being taken to hospital because they had a uh, bit of severe injuries. We all sit in the dressing room and talk, talk about what happened. Within minutes, there's laughter and jokes have started to flow. We have for the first time being a target of violence, we had survived. 
So it was for the first time they were being a target of violence and they survived. They managed to save their life, right? At this moment, he's saying, we realize that what some of our fellow Sri Lankans experience every day for nearly 30 years. Now, they understood that what people are going through for 30 years, they went through it only for a few minutes. But these people in border villages, these people in northern and uh, eastern part of Sri Lanka, they are facing these incidents constantly. There was a new respect and awe for their courage and selflessness. So he says that there was a new respect and awe and honor for their courage and selflessness. Especially the soldiers, they are very selfless, okay, and very courageous. So there was a new respect for that. Okay, I, I'm asking you to like watch some movies related to like what happened during the war and all. Then it's very clear for you to have some sort of a background detail, right? What sort of situation we as a country faced during that time. I think you might be very young those days, right? So it's notable how quickly we got over the attack on us. Although we were physically injured, mentally we held strong. So what does that mean? We were physically injured, but mentally we were strong. That is what's needed. What happens is when people are physically injured, they mentally also become injured. But you have to keep your mentality strong. A few hours later, the attack, we were airlifted to the Lahore Air Force Base. Ajanta Mendes, his head swathed in bandages after multiple shrapnel wounds, such as the game of a poker. Now his head was also covered with bandages and he like looks like a game of a poker. Multiple shrapnel wounds, like little, little, little small, uh, small wounds. Okay, maybe like he was hit with the glasses of the bus or whatsoever, right? Tilan has been brought back sedated but fully conscious to be with us and we made jokes at him and he smiles back. So now that is what should happen. Okay, when somebody is, well, what do you do? go and do? Uh, your head is injured, right? Your leg is injured. Huh? For sure, you won't be able to walk for a while, right? So people say things like that. Okay? Can you understand? Right? So, but it's not what has to be happen. You have to tell things. Okay? To make them console. Okay? To make them um, feel happy. Likewise. We were shot at. Grenades were thrown at us. We were injured and yet we were not cowed. So what does that mean? We were shot at and grenades were thrown at us. We were injured and yet we were not cowed. We were not afraid. We were not down and out. We are Sri Lankan, we thought to ourselves. And we are tough and we will get through hardship and we will overcome because our spirit is strong. What does that mean? We are not down and out, right? We are like not getting out easily. We are Sri Lankan. We thought to ourselves, that means we are strong. We are Sri Lankans. And we are tough and we will get through hardship and we will overcome because our spirit is strong. Now you can see what sort of spirit, what sort of personality he is displaying at this um, Colleen Cowdery lecture. To tell that he is a Sri Lankan in front of foreign audience. So it shows his like the capacity, the strength, okay, um, as a sort of a Sri Lankan, right. This was what the world saw in our interviews immediately after the attack. We were calm, collected, rational. Our emotions held true to our role as unofficial ambassadors. Here, children, is it diff difficult for you to focus? Like, you know, my next door na neighborhood dog is like, making a big sound, right? I don't know why it's that. So is it okay for you? Am I audible to you? Yeah, okay, I'm really sorry about the background noise. Right, so this is what the world saw us in interviews immediately after the attack. We were calm, collected and rational. So that is what people saw. Even we were panicked, right? Okay, so we, you know, like other countries, like telling that thing. Okay, so we should we should not play in Pakistan. Pakistan is not a safe country anymore. Okay, so even Pakistan cricket team should not be allowed to visit their own countries. 
but in, in that time like without making this a national crisis okay so they were like very calm collected and rational our emotional self true to our role as unofficial ambassadors ambassadors is tana pativaru like was they are representing the country okay so they were very like you know very strong willed and um, they were facing the situation very bravely a week after our arrival in colombo from pakistan i was driving about town and was stopped at a checkpoint a soldier politely inquired as to my health after the attack so a soldier politely inquired about his health i said i was fine and added that what they as soldiers experience every day we only experience for few minutes so what did he say what you experience daily as soldiers we experienced it only for few minutes but managed to grab all the news headlines okay so he said that so but we always catch the news headlines so what is happening in the country that soldier looked me in the eye and replied it's okay if i die because it's my job and i'm ready for it but you are a hero if you were to die it would be a great loss for our country now anybody like say that can i value my life uh, better than yours or higher than yours no because all our lives are equal so he was feeling i was taken aback how can this man value his life less than mine his sincerity was overwhelming i felt humbled he felt really humbled okay so he is saying that it's okay if i die no that is the way how the sri lankan soldiers okay feel okay they are ready to sacrifice their life for the safety of others right this was the passion that the cricket and the cricketers evoke in sri lankans this is the love that i strive every day my life my career to be worthy of so he feel that his his career is worthy because he has been loved by sri lankans this is the love okay the sri lankan cricketers or oh, like daily experience okay so they evoke in sri lankans that that much of uh, respect love likewise okay i hope this is clear to you this is just a story analysis later on we will discuss what are the themes techniques and what are the qualities of sangakkara like how what sort of qualities he display throughout this a uh, speech right okay so you have a small task what are the leadership qualities that can be seen in sangakkara speech list them down 